Am I talking about bribing people? I am not talking about bribing people, okay? Am I talking about greasing palms? No. Ugh. Welcome back to Planet Columbia. I've got a video today. I'm going to go through the advice I was given by Colombians when I moved here. Because I know I have some people who probably think, oh, who is this guy? He thinks he's an authority on Colombia. Why do all Americans think that they're authorities? Blah, 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 blah. I'm going to give you five pieces of advice that was given to me by Colombians when I moved down here. All right. Uh, so follow along. All right, let's get into it. Okay, so the first piece of advice, let me let me straighten out the camera a little bit. So the first piece of advice that I got was from a neighbor who I met at a restaurant. I was at a local restaurant, um, pretty much a block or two away from where I was living. And I go in a restaurant, it's, it's very local. I would always see people from my own neighborhood in there. And one day I seen one of my neighbors uh, you know, he hears me ordering in my English, but then talking, you know, my gringo ease, right? My, my, you know, hola, how are you? Como vas? Como, todo bien? Si, sí, todo bien, todo bien, listo, right? Um, and he starts, you know, talking to me, he makes conversation. He says, you know, hey, uh, can I sit here? Can we have lunch together? I was like, sure. <laughs> you know, he's an older fella, um, in his 60s or 70s. And he starts telling me about how his daughter uh, married a Frenchman. She lives in France. He used to work at the airport in in, um, in Medellin, the one in that's actually in the city. And uh, he was like, he was an airport controller. He would comp he would control the, like the helicopters coming into the airport. Okay. And I mean, really nice guy. He he. We, we get lunch, we have lunch, uh, I'm about to head home, right? And he's like, hey, uh, this is like my first couple weeks. He's like, you doing anything? I'm, I gotta go to Envigado and take care of a couple of things. I'll, you know, I'll ride you down there if you want, show you some stuff and we'll, you know, I'll drop you off at your place. And I was like, that sounds great, you know? It's amazing how nice the people are. So we get there and, you know, we sit down and we have coffee and he says to me, David, something you need to know about the people out here, he said, the thing to know about Colombians is, I'm gonna say it in Spanish first, and then I'm gonna say it in English because it's, it was more dramatic when he said it in Spanish. He says, he said, David, aquí en Colombia, hay los buenos y hay los otros, los malos. That's how he said it. And I was like, damn, <laughs> that's some real shit. <laughs> he was basically saying, what that translates to is David, here in Colombia, there are the good ones, there are the good people, and there are the others, the bad people. And I took that to mean, I took that to mean that there are people, most people, the good people here, they're very good. They're very, they're, they're like they say in the movies out here, humilde y firme. They're, they're, they're humble and they're firm. They're good people, salt of the earth. But there are also bad people out here. There are also people out here that will prey on others. They prey on their own people and Colombians. They prey on Venezuelans and they love to prey on gringos. They're good prey. And so he was, um, I, you know, that was it, it kind of when he said that to me, uh, this being a guy his age who had lived through all that he had lived through. He lived through the conflict era out here. Um, yeah. I, it, it struck me a little bit because I was like, that's that's actually pretty sound advice. What he's saying is there are people who are clearly good out here, clearly good people. And if you stick to those, you probably won't have no problems. But there are people out here who are bad and you cannot confuse them for bad. You know, by contrast, you go to the States, you go to places in Europe. There's like always people that like they love to party and, you know, they're smoking and they're going to raves and all that stuff. And, you know. You don't confuse them. You don't just say because somebody got tattoos in the States, they're bad. And it's not like you say just because someone has tattoos down here that they're bad. But what I'm saying is there's more of a gray area in other places. Here in Colombia, when it comes to people who are good and they are bad, it's kind of like black and white. Like you, you can distinguish between very easily between those who are good and those who are bad. You know, so a lot of times when you hear about people getting into bad situations out here, I'm not judging when I say this, but they are choosing to be around people who are not the good people, right? They're the others. And what happens when something bad happens, you, you realize, oh, okay, I was hanging out with the bad people out here. 
you know? I don't think it's as simplistic as that either. There are random things that happen in Colombia, but it's just like anywhere else. If you are if you are trying to keep yourself and you're trying to make certain precautions and you are trying to stay on the safe side of things, you'll have very few problems out here. And on the other side of things, if you are going out and you're always like, you know, you always want to go out and party, you always want to go out and, you know, drink something and you always want to go out and, you know, hang out with the ladies of the night, it can lead to some pretty bad results. All right. So that's number one. Number two. Don't play with your cell phone in traffic. You'll probably hear this if you get in a uh, taxi cab yourself. When you're new here, don't don't play with your cell phone in traffic. Um, if you're going to look at your cell phone, right, roll up your windows. Uh, basically, what that comes down to is there's a lot of motorcycles in Medi. There's a huge motorcycle culture, as I've said in other videos. It's probably the first motor vehicle that somebody will buy, that a Colombian will buy when living in Colombia. You know, what happens commonly is somebody's on their cell phone, right, texting away, not paying any attention, windows down, and somebody on a motorcycle rides right up to you, you know, red light at the traffic light, right? Snatch it, and then they just ride on by, and there's nothing you can do about it. Once they do that, they t make a right, make a left, they're gone. You, there's no chance you're going to get it back, unfortunately. Okay. So that little bit of precaution, not playing with your cell phone in traffic, uh, keeping your windows rolled up, it, it is something that can keep you from getting your cell phone stolen. Okay. It's a unique dynamic of Columbia out here. Lots of motorcycles. Sometimes it feels like, you know, we're in Mad Max on the set of Mad Max, but, um, Hey, it's just, it's part of life. It's part of what you deal with out here. Number three. Eat at Menus del Dia, stay away from the mall food. So my first couple weeks here, uh, I my first two weeks here, I took a Spanish course at the Tucan, Tucan School, Tucan Academy. I can't remember the exact name of it, but it's like this famous place. It's very popular with, you know, with the foreigners, with the green whales. It's a very popular place to go and get your, um, you know, just, just start taking some Spanish classes. So I had this, uh, I took like a, I guess, I took a course like kind of by myself, it was like one-on-one. -on -one. And uh, I had a really cool instructor, her name was Mafe. Um, and we, me and Mafe, because because like it got so routine, she said my Spanish is really good. So she was like, you know, we need to like go out and do stuff that's not, you know, just sitting in the classroom. So we would go out, walk around, make conversation with people, that kind of thing, you know, sit there and talk and, and like at a cafe. And she, uh, she, she showed me around, she shows me to some different restaurants. She says, she shows me this one restaurant, it's a real hole in the wall. I'm like, you know, she says, if you ever need to go and get something uh, cheap to eat, that's a good place. Seven mil. Like seven mil. At the time, seven mil was like $2.15. So I'm like, seven mil you know what i mean and of course i went in there i'm not gonna lie the food wasn't so great but she said it was for a it's like a taxi stand type restaurant and what she told me was restaurants like this they serve the same stuff every day and these are the cheapest places to eat and what i learned was at the end of the day a menu del dia right whether it's at a restaurant that exclusively does that or a restaurant that does that for lunch right is always going to provide you the most affordable option when it comes to eating out, just it's just the way it is. It's a really good system. I mean, I, you know, I guess it I guess it works here in Colombia because I've never seen anything like it. But with the menu del dia, you can get yourself soup or a cazuela, like a bean a bean cazuela, right? Um, lemonade or juice of your choice. You can get a what they call plato fuerte, so that could be like chicken breast. A chicken breast fillet with some rice and some fries or some some greens or some vegetables or something and you can even get a dessert with that you know one of my favorite menu that is in uh in my old neighborhood shoot i don't think i ever paid more than 10 mil for a meal for a meal there and i would get salad bar right salad bar uh a soup if they were offering soup on the day I'd get the plato fuerte, which would be, you know, for me, it'd be like chicken breast or solomito. Solomito is like sirloin cut with uh, with some rice, some fries. And then also we even, I think they even did dessert. They did do dessert every day, but some days they did dessert too. 
and you get, you know, as much juice or lemonade as you want. It's like a three course, four course meal for three dollars, three and a half dollars. OK, so you have I mean, if you're coming to Medellin, Colombia to live, OK, you got to You're going to have to eat at many of these at some point. Embrace it. The food is really good, honestly, for the cost. It's amazing. Definitely, definitely a good piece of advice that I got. Number four, get a car to live the full experience. So this was also um, a piece of advice I got from a friend after first moving here, uh, a guy who, he grew up in New York, so he spoke English, but he was like, you know, I think I met him through Uber, but we, you know, we got kind of cool. And one day I was just like, you know, it was like early on, I was, I didn't, I was so bored. And I was like, hey, what are you doing, man? You know, can you show me around for a little bit? He's like, yeah, man, you know, whatever. So, you know, he gets his, uh, picks up his girlfriend, right? Comes, picks me up, and then we go to a mirador. Like a mirador is like, it's one of these lookout points over the city. Um, since the lockdowns, a lot of these places probably got closed down and they're not exactly what they used to be. But I've been to a couple different miradores in, in Medellin, and one of them that I used to always go to was in Las Palmas. It was close to my old neighborhood. Um, Man, they had restaurants up there. You go hang out, parchad, have a couple beers. That place used to be lit. Between 2016 and 2018, that place was lit. Maybe 2019 too as well. But around 2019, they shut it down. Anyway, that's a whole other story. I'm getting off track. What happened was we were going up there. You know, he whipping in his car and everything. And I was, uh, you know, I asked him about it. I was like, you know it seems kind of like you need a car to get around. And he was like, well, you don't need a car to get around, you know, in Medellin. But if you want to go to the Pueblos, if you want to get out of town, you know, if you want to have the full Colombian experience, you're going to need to get a car. And I was like, you know, <laughs> like I wasn't trying to get a car at the time. Um, put that off for a minute. You know, I was I'm not trying to get a car at the time because I knew I was gonna be in the city most of the time and I figured if I'm gonna go out to the Pueblos, I'll just get on a bus or I'll get a hired driver, which is right. While you're living in, in the city, you don't actually need a car. But once you start actually exploring like this part of Colombia, this part of Antioquia a little bit, getting around, going to different places, you realize just how much there is to see. And, it's, and he's right. If you don't get a car at some point you won't get to experience the full medellin the full antioquia there's just no way um that does not mean rent a car okay I'm, I'm telling you right now i don't advise renting a car on your first or even second trip out here to medellin the roads are really crazy you have to be there's there's some rules you really need to know and it's just not like the states it's not like the states okay but he was right, you know, to really get around, do different things, to have, you know, I don't know, to have that full experience, you do need a car. It's true. Uh, and lastly, they show showing love. They're showing love. I'm getting notifications about comments and stuff. They're showing love. David, you know, everything in Colombia comes down to money. Okay. That was the last piece of advice I got, all right? Um, he said, David. You know, and this, and she said this to me in English. She said, "David, you know everything in Colombia comes down to money." All right. So, I uh, when I first moved here, I hired a relocation company to to help me out moving here. Okay. And what do they do? This this relocation company helped me find my apartment. Just helped me get accustomed to things. Took me on a tour of the city. Showed me different places I would need to go. Different parts of the city I really needed to be aware of. You know, and the lady who who owns that company, she's an English speaker. She's Colombian born, Colombian native, but she speaks English perfectly, fluently. And uh, she's just been a godsend for me since I moved down here. Because honestly, anytime I ever get stuck or I don't know what to do, I'm like, I, I, what do I do? I get stuck in some bureaucratic loophole or something. She is, she's who I go to. And... I remember uh, this was something, this actually was not a piece of advice I got when I first moved here, but rather before the lockdowns, I was hitting her up before the lockdowns, asking her about um, some of the stuff I needed when it came to getting my license, you know, 
and I was just like, how do I get past this? How do I get past this? I was getting into like one of these bureaucratic uh, catch-22 situations that's, that, that happen out here in Medellin. And she says, David, you know, she gives me, <laughs> she, she says, David, <laughs> you know everything in Colombia comes down to money. And I was like, yeah. <laughs> And she goes, you need to go to da, 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 da place. She says, you need to go check out this specific business and talk to them. And you just need to go through whatever process they got for you. And then it'll work. So I did that and it worked. Now, what did I have to do in the process? I had to pay some money. <laughs> I had to pay some money, but we got it done. I've got my license now, right? And that's been a huge difference for me. Um, but it was funny because at the time it was just like, I, you know, even I knew this, I already knew this when she told it to me, but it was like very much a piece of advice that I think people need to hear sometimes. Everything comes down to money out here. Okay. Um, if you're trying to get something and you're, you're concerned of whether or not you can get it, obviously there could be some restrictions that you have to go for you have to be, you know, you really have to uh, be aware of or whatever, but generally speaking, if you got the money, if you're following the rules, you're going to get what you're looking for out here. That's one of the things I love about Colombia. You know, there's parts of the states where it's like you can have the money, you know, you can you can have the connections and you can still not get accepted or you can still have a problem. You know, there can still be some little thing that makes you have to wait X number, X amount of time to get something done. Right. Out here, it really is like if you if you got the money, you're good to go. There's there's good and there's bad to this, of course. The bad is that unqualified people or people who are taking advantage can come up with money and then potentially get what they're looking for, right? But the good thing is, if you are actually a good person with the right mindset, and you know, oh, you just happen to have some cash, some money, you can make it happen. Am I talking about bribing people? I am not talking about bribing people, okay? Am I talking about greasing palms? No, okay? I'm simply talking about there are processes here. And sometimes the processes seem real extra compared to what we deal with in the States. Real extra, and they sometimes seem like they don't make no sense. However, at, you know, it just comes down to money, okay? And sometimes that's how it feels. You're like, ugh, they're talking about all these different little requirements and this, that, the other. Why didn't they just lead with they want 200,000 pesos for this? You know what I mean? Like they'll tell you about seven, ten different things they want done, right? But if you pay 200,000 or if you pay 400,000, right, you don't have to deal with none of that stuff. So it's like, why didn't you just tell me the prices from the beginning? <laughs> so anyways, that's what I got for you today. Um, five pieces of advice that I got upon moving to Colombia, except for that last one. Um, I think they all apply to this day. I think you can use them for, you know, your experience when moving out here. Uh, they might seem a little too allegorical, some of those, those pieces of advice, because they're not like, it's not like I'm saying, you know, buy your computer at Computer City, right? Um, but, hey, I, I think the principles there are, they give you like, some real guidelines for how to conduct yourself in Medellin, understanding who to deal with, who not to deal with, uh, how you relate to your own experience down here. I think that's pretty important because there's a lot of context to know here in Medellin, Colombia, about life. You know, it's not like a lot of other places. It's a little different. You need to know some of the context of the history of the culture, I think, before you move here. Because one thing people aren't aware of about Medellin, Colombia, the reason that it really is the way it is, the reason it's so different from other South American cities or from other um, Colombian cities or what we're used to in the States, is because this is a historically very isolated region, okay? Like, prior to the, the 20th century, nobody, like, the whole world wasn't, wasn't um, you know, the whole world wasn't looking out for, for Antioquia. Nobody was checking for Antioquia in the 17th, 18th, 19th century, you know? Like, this is historically an, ex an extremely isolated region, okay? Like, it, once you live out here and you get an idea of what the roads are like and you know how long it takes to get from Medellin to Bogota or Medellin to Cartagena by car, you start to get an idea that this place is really, like, 
kind of in the middle of nowhere compared to some of the other parts of Colombia or some of the more interconnected parts of South America. And if you ever wonder why the people speak so different out here from people in other parts of, the, of, of, uh, of Latin America or why the norms out here are so different from even other parts of Colombia, it's because of that. It's because this is a very historically isolated region and they've just developed their own customs for how to deal with things. And, you know, like I said, it creates its own context for life out here. So if you like this video, please like, please subscribe, comment down below, give us some more ideas, tell us what you're thinking. Um, if I sound like an idiot American who, uh, <laughs> who, who just thinks he's the, an authority on Colombia, then uh, yeah, be free to tell me as well because I'm taking all comers at this point, okay? All right.